um, probably the first thing that really drew me to this course where if you're like me, we have lots of students. Um, at a community college where I am, I have a, a five, five course load generally. Um, if you're doing a full course load, um, you know, 30 students or so per class, you know, students can get missed, right? In terms of spending so much time on our students who are struggling um, that sometimes we miss those students who are doing well or kind of in between. Um, and the automated systeming, automated messaging system from Lumen really kind of helps take off some of the um, uh, the workload from my shoulders to automate, automatically um, provide students with some feedback. Um, but what's nice about it is you can really customize it yourself, right? So I call um, my emails, my cheerleader emails, um, because I really like that style and that voice. They will give you templates, and we'll, I'll show you those in a moment. They'll give you templates for what um, you could use already but you also can update it into your own voice. Your own voice. You can sign it how you normally sign your emails. So it really feels like it's coming from you. So, um, you know, including your office hours, or I call them student hours, um, the times for tutoring, locations, all kinds of things that you can increase or include if you like. Um, and it really does kind of help those students form those connections um, for you. Um, I've just went through quickly and just did a look to see. Um, I have a part of term class. My class has been running. Um, this week is our fourth week of our term. So they've been using the actual study plans for about three weeks. And I've gotten about a dozen responses of emails from students, um, almost all of them from the cheerleader, yeah, you're doing great emails um, that, that students are getting. Um, <clears throat> and a couple from the ones who got the, hey, do you need help emails? Um, but you know, a good dozen of students I probably wouldn't have heard from otherwise if they hadn't gotten these emails already. So it really does kind of help foster that confidence for students um, and that connection um, to them already. And you know, really, um, these, these emails are, are really set up to really help um, support them where they are. So giving them, them, them that, that personalized hurrah, yes, you're doing great, or the, hey, do you need some more help kind of, kind of looks. Um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and just jump on over, um, Angelica, to the actual um, Waymaker form. So this this um, sample course is in a Canvas format. So if you're using a different um, platform or LMS, it may look a little different to you. Um, so but under the faculty resources, what you're going to look for is this Waymaker Engagement Center. So you'll click into there. Um, and then you'll see here in the second half of this, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the message assistant, um, as well as the time sensitive interventions at the top. But before we go into this, let's go ahead and go to settings. I want to, I do want to show you how to set this up originally. This is not automatically set up for you. Um, so even if you have it set up in one course, if you copy that course over to a new course, you're going to have to turn it on each semester. So that's one thing you have to make sure you remember to do um, to set it up. Oh, and I love that it's coming from Alba Stumbador. That, that is fantastic. Um, but you can come in here, you can set it up originally. So just click the turn on. Um, if you click the arrow there by Alba Stumbador, um, uh, it shows you who it's being sent from. Um, I think the first time you do it, you can put your email and different things in there as well. Um, but it gives you that opportunity to set it up. Here are the, um, below there, you see the different templates that you can use. I mean, you can see the different reasons why they'll get these emails. So they get two different emails. Um, they'll get a study tip email if they've used um, uh, less than 25% of the, those formative assessments that you know are coming in each of the study plans right before taking their first quiz. And if they score be below the mastery threshold that is set, and then you can set that yourself in the course settings, um, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, I think it's default at 80%, which is where I keep it at because I want my students to, to go um, above, a little above, but the 70C, I want them to get that B or better, um, and they'll automatically get that. They don't get it every single time. Um, it's set no more than once every two weeks to any particular student, um, but there's different messages that they can get, so it doesn't look like they're getting the same thing every time. So you just want to click into one of them um, to kind of show what's here. And again, it does um, personalize it, right? So um, it will put their first name to it so they'll look like it's coming from from them or to them directly. Um, and again, you can um, you know personalize how you want to, to write. You can change the subject, you can change the, the content here at all. Um, 
So whatever you want to do, you can make these changes. Um, and again, you can change it so it looks like it's coming directly from you um, and, and put it in your own words. So you can, you know, I generally leave a lot of these value tips ones pretty similar to what they are. Um, it just depends on what um, what fits for you and your wording. Okay, you can go ahead and close out of this one. Um, and then there's also the nice work emails. And this is when students reach or exceed that um, um, threshold that you set. This is the ones I call my cheerleader emails. Um, and I really like to have it um, uh, you know, be that you know, awesome, fantastic. And it's always fun to get those responses from students to say, oh my gosh, thank you so much for noticing, right? Because again, these are the students that I tend to miss sometimes because I'm spending time on the students who are struggling a little bit. Um, so it will automatically sign it for you in the settings. You will you know, set how you want it to, to be signed from you. So mine always says best comma prof Salader because that's how I you know, contact and, and that's how I do my normal emails. The one thing that I will say about this that can be a little bit confusing for students is it does happen in real time for when the students take things. So I did have a student once who was a very much a night owl and taking her, her um, quizzes and things in the middle of the night. And she emailed me and said, responded to email and said, um, I really hope you weren't up at 4 a.m. Um, watching me take this. That makes me feel a little weird. So I had to give in to her and say, well, I'm not really sending them. Um, I set them up so they would go automatically, um, but it does go automatically in the middle of the night. So um, just be aware of that. Okay, you can go back here. Um, go ahead and go to the, just down the different setting. Yeah, four settings is fine. So here's where you can set that mastery threshold. It is set automatically at 80%. So again, um, whatever you want to send it for your students of whether they want to be um, at or above that threshold to help them encourage that attempt um, more than once. Um, so if you want them to be above 90% or at 70%, depending on your program or your course or wherever it might be, um, you can change it as often as you want to do that um, for them. Let's go ahead and change, go to the communication preferences next. Okay, yeah, here's where you're going to add in your, your email address and your first and last name and how you want to sign your emails. Okay, so you can um, set that up so your emails um, are set. Again, that's where I put my breath, my best Prof Salder look to them. Um, and you also um, can have information about getting notifications. So um, you can have them send you an email every time a notification recommendation is triggered and you'll get those kind of rec recommended emails and we'll um, look at that in a moment um, or not. Um, I'm in here regularly all the time. So I have, when I first started using the system, I had the re recommendations um, triggered to be able to remind me regularly to go in. Um, and I've gotten away from that some because it's part of just what I do now. Um, so I'm not sent, getting them sent to me because you do get quite a few from students who are really active, right? So um, it just depends on what where you are in your process. Just you know that um, if you need that little reminder, um, it's a good point to kind of have that there. All right, and then for the last setting there is the intervention messages section. Um, now these are the um, students that um, who are scoring below the mastery threshold um, despite having worked. So what we saw earlier, they had the, 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 the um, keep trying emails and those are for the emails for students who haven't really engaged with the platform um, and then scored lower saying, hey, make sure you're engaging. These, um, emails are set for students who are really are, are using the, the, those formative assessments, right? They're doing the try it questions and they're doing the things in the system, but they're still not doing well um, on their quizzes. So it will flag you so with the notification you'll get from, it'll be flagged for that student um, and you'll see that flag and then you can choose how to interact with that student. So you could just do your own invitation or your own email to them or reaching out to them or perhaps you have them in a person in person class, you could just talk with them. But they also have these emails that you can um, uh, send to them individually. So um, this is one that I really do um, a good bit of um, tweaking to these emails. So the office hours invitation, this email kind of what will happen, they'll get they will get a very particular email. Um, um, you know, about you know, you can again, you can change the subject, you can change the information that's inside of it, but it'll say, you know. Hi, Stacy. Those might be struggling with these certain things, and it lists specifically the areas that they struggled with when they took that quiz, right? So, 
um, since I call my office hours student hours, I change that. We talk to you during student hours. Um, we are WebEx school, so I'll, you know, during over WebEx, um, those types of things. So I set it up and proof, you know, change it out um, more for those, you know, individual messages for those students um, to really be working with me. I include my student hours in the emails for the semester. It's like these are the times I'm, I'm available. Um, those kind of things, so we can really um, work with students. If you use some type of um, scheduling software for your student office hours, right? If you use bookings or something where students can schedule meetings, you can put that link in here that automatically will be sent to them, those kinds of things. But it's just a nice way to kind of help, you know, invite them in, right? We know a lot about um, students don't do optional, right? They won't may not reach out to you individually, but if you kind of put that invitation out there, um, it really helps. Um, students want to do that. And what's so nice about this is even though you do have to click the button to send this email, it is automatically updated for you. Um, so it takes a little less time than it might be trying to retype that every single time um, you're trying to send these messages to students. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to the, the, the engagement center part there. Oh, oh so, sorry, I forgot something I'll help. Let's do this first. You're right. Um, the second email that's here that you can get, you could send them as well. Um, is this supplemental email tips and resources. So again, it starts the same type of way. And then you can also add resources. Um, so if you have a list of certain videos or tutoring centers or certain things that are available to them um, that you can um, include, you can add those to this. So I like to use this one um, on, on usually on very specific type of topics. So again, I teach psychology. So those who are in the room with psychology know students are going to struggle with classical conditioning right, operant conditioning. They're going to struggle with, you know, um, correlations perhaps, but certain things I know that they're um, where they have more than individual struggles. I have those lists of resources that I just send students as they need them, right? So I can, you know, quickly add them and, you know, copy and paste it into the certain email and have it sent out to them um, for those individual things. Um, so I don't use this for every time we're doing things, but it depends. Um, um, for, for, for the topic. Um, sometimes I'll just send the automatic, just please come reach out to me, let's talk. Other times I'll say, here's a couple of resources for you to watch. Um, and I will kind of lead something. You said, talk about here, if, you're, if you watch this and you're still stuck, let me know, we'll schedule a meet time, right? So again, it's a way to kind of help give you that information um, to help your students out. Okay. Now let's go back up to the engagement center here. Click right there. Okay, so this is what you see um, when we talk about how the students being flagged to help you when you come into the engagement center at, at first. Um, the bottom half shows you how many emails have 